Welcome back to Mackie Tech, everyone. And I do apologize if I sound a little bit nasally. Uh, I had a cold, or I've had a cold for the past week, and it's been kind of kicking my butt, but uh, I am feeling good enough to do a recording. Uh, back in December, I did a video on Zorin OS 17 Core, which is the free version. Uh, and I wanted to talk about it with respect to its replacement for Windows because of its ease of use and all of its customization options. And in this video, I did a brief uh, overview of Zorin Pro, which is an upgraded version for $48. So in today's video, I wanted to revisit Zorin Pro. And recently, Zorin OS actually reached out to me and offered me a free review copy of Zorin OS 17.3 Pro. And the point .3 was released March 26th and it includes a new browser called Brave, which we'll take a peek at. And in full disclosure, Zorin has not seen this video, nor have they requested any edits. All the opinions and comments are my own. So let's take a look at Zorin OS 17.3 Pro, and we'll compare it to uh, Zorin 17.2 Core, which is the free version, We'll take a look at the different desktop layouts and the available apps that are in Zord 17 Pro. And let's decide if it's something that you think is worth the additional $48. So stay tuned. Okay, so here we are in Zorin OS 17.3 Pro that I have loaded onto my Menace Forum UM890 Elite Pro, which I did an unboxing of and a dual boot video on uh, Windows and Pop! OS, which I will put in the video description. I also have in here for comparison purposes, a virtual machine running Zorin OS 17.2 Core. And this is the one that I reviewed uh, back in December. And this is the free version. And you can see right off the bat that it has uh, four desktop layouts, and we'll take a look at that in just a second. For the Pro version, if we bring up the desktop layouts, that's a little bit, it's a little bit different story. I'm gonna move this over just so we can look at both of them at the same time. And we're, I'm, I'm using the, the, the one in the uh, upper left-hand corner for both. And you can see that my icons are on the lower left-hand corner in my virtual machine, and they're the same place. Um, on the pro version if i scroll down i can see that the pro version has an additional six desktop layouts that we'll take a walk through uh, the first of which is a mac os sort of desktop layout if you will it does have the icons uh below which are the way that macintosh does it it has a little uh, launch bar just like on mac so you can click on that and you can cycle through your different apps using your mouse key or uh, rather your mouse middle button or a trackpad or just by clicking the little dots here. So that's very reminiscent of Mac and it has a little files here just like the finder um, and it has a trash can on the far right hand side just like you would on a Mac. So those are very reminiscent which is always nice. And one thing I will point out that if you do have the Mac toolbar on the bottom like you do here for this layout uh, normally with Macs, when you have that, you will have um, additional options up here like file, edit, appearance on a Mac, but that's not in Zorin because it's not a Mac. But um, it does have the toolbar on here, which is very handy. Uh, next up, let's take a look at, I'm going to minimize this now because we're looking at the additional ones that come in Pro. If I click on the next one over on the left, we have a more of a Windows 11 layout, if you will. And it has all the icons on the bottom. Uh, it has a little start menu here, which brings up all of your, your apps here that you can scroll through if you want to with your mouse's middle button. And then if we go to the next one on the below that, to the kitty corner to that, this one is more of a Ubuntu layout. So you have your files up here, you have your software, um, and that's just kind of how that's laid out for the Ubuntu one. And then if we go over on the right of that, this one is more of a Windows 10 layout. And you have your little Zorin software launcher slash start menu here. And the other ones below this are more of hybrids. 
This one is another take on uh, Windows 11. Uh, has the icon spaced apart a little bit more, I think. And then this one is an additional option for your preferences if you wanted to have them a little more spaced out or more of a, almost reminds me of Windows XP, but it just depends on uh, what you're looking for. Uh, the one difference between um, Zorin 17.3 and Zorin 17.2, regardless if it's Core or Pro, is that it does have a new default browser called Brave. Uh, I have not monkey with this yet, but it was released in 2016. It is based off of the Google Chromium, so that is an additional as opposed to uh, Firefox. Now, the core version and the pro version do come with a lot of additional software. Uh, the pro version is what we're going to be looking at for the added software options that you do have, and I will list them in the video description. But let's take a look at a couple of the additional software packages that you will get in starting with Blender. And Blender is a 3D modeling tool. Uh, you can use it to make all types of different objects. You have your camera view here, you have your light source here. You can uh, copy and paste objects. You can make new objects. I am certainly not at all proficient with this tool, but uh, it does have a lot of use cases if you're doing any type of animation or any type of uh, rendering that you wanted to uh, get more familiar with. And then you have Krita, which is a drawing slash uh, sketching tool slash painting program, which gives you tons of different, you know, brush presets and tools and different ways to draw things. And then of course you have the ever popular Libra Office. Uh, right now we're in Libra Impress, which is analogous to uh, Microsoft Office PowerPoint. And that also comes with a spreadsheet word processor. It comes with a drawing program. You have Scribus or Scribus, depending on how you want to pronounce it, which is your desktop publishing tool. And we also have Darktable, FreeCAD, the popular GIMP, Inkspace, Caden Live, which I use to create some of this video, and many others that I will uh, I will list all of them in the video description. So to summarize, Zorin Pro comes with six additional desktop layouts for the Windows and Mac OS crowd, as well as Linux crowds, uh, if you wanted to have other options. It also comes with several additional productivity packages and multimedia software packages and apps, but you could also download those for free using Zorin OS Core. Lastly, Zorin Pro also offers support to all of its users for the additional $48. And if nothing else, it's always nice to support and give back to a Linux distro, an open source Linux distro like Zorin, which is always making improvements. My only question or maybe challenge is if Zorin is going to continue to charge an additional amount every time there is a major update to Zorin Pro. Uh, perhaps a better option might be that if you are a new upgrade user to Zorin Pro is to charge the $48. And then if you are upgrading, or rather if you are a current Pro user, perhaps there might be a discounted option. Just my thoughts. But what do you guys think? Do you find value in the additional $48 for Zorin Pro? Is that something you've ever used before? Or is there any software that's included that would make you want to get the Zorin Pro or perhaps one of the desktop layouts that suits you better than the default that's in Zorin Co? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're there, if you're not subscribed, please make sure to do so. Also, as a reminder, starting April 1st, I will be starting my new Patreon account. Also, I do have merch available, so I will list that in my video description. So thank you again, everybody, for watching. Please leave me any comments and any feedback, and I will see you in the next video. Talk to you soon.